In this video, we're going to look at labeling headaches and what you can do about them. So it's often the case that you have a map like this. So you've got areas of different sizes. This is Greater London in the UK and the areas are the different boroughs of London plus the city of London. So there's 33 areas in the map and they differ quite a lot in size and shape. If I show you the table for the layer, the attribute table, we have a name column and that's all fine. But you can see that we have areas like Hammersmith and Fulham, Kensington and Chelsea and Kingston upon Thames. So we also have Richmond upon Thames, which is quite big. And it's often the case that you'll, you have a situation like this. You've got Hammersmith and Fulham now highlighted yellow on the map. It's a small area, relatively. It's not very wide and it's got a really long name similar to Kensington and Chelsea. So that's going to be a bit of a labeling headache for us. And let's just have a look at what happens when we turn the labels on. So I'll get rid of the attribute table. I can right click the layer name and hit show labels and it will probably pick the correct column, but it doesn't always. So what I'll do is I'll just go to properties. I'll go to labels and I'll just choose single labels and I'll click apply. Okay, so it's chosen the wrong column. That's fine. We just change the value field via the drop down to the name column. And let's click OK. All right, so this is perfect almost in terms of position for labels in places like Enfield, Barnet, Harrow, Sutton, Croydon, Bromley, and so on. It's right in the middle and there's loads of space. But for some places, Richmond upon Thames is okay because it fits within the boundary and it's got the river going down the middle. But for the ones I mentioned, Kensington and Chelsea or Hammersmith and Fulham, that's just not going to work. The City of London one isn't displaying at all. Um, and other ones are maybe in the wrong place. So we need to have a little think about what we can do about this. And one of the ways I would often deal with this uh, for some of them, maybe using a two line label. So let's look at that. If I double click on the layer on the left to open the layer properties, one of the things you can do is go to labels and then formatting. And if you look at the formatting section, you should see something like wrap lines to. And what you can do is you can choose a number of characters. So let's choose say 12 characters. And after 12 characters, if any labels got more than 12 characters, it will wrap it over multiple lines. So let's click apply. Okay. So, Barking and Dagenham and Waltham Forest are now in two lines and they definitely fit better. So that's that's quite good. I can see, I could probably go to text now. This is what I usually do. I might change it to size nine and hit apply. That'll probably work. Is eight too small? It's not terrible, but I prefer nine. Okay, so if I... If I just go and click OK now, we need to do a little bit more work, I think. City of London's appeared. It doesn't look like it's um, in the right position. The Westminster's fine, but Kensington and Chelsea and Hammersmith and Fulham are still a bit of a problem. So what could we do about that? Kingston-upon-Thames isn't great either. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to manually move a couple so I'll manually move Kingston upon Thames and Barking and Dagenham so they're right in the middle. If I if I use a different approach, what I could do is I could double click the layer to go to layer properties and go to placement. And at the moment in the placement settings, the mode is around centroid. If I change it to offset from centroid and the quadrant section will have it in the middle and I click uh, click apply. That usually will move things around a little bit better. So Barking and Dagenham's in a better position now, but it's not exactly where we want it. Um, Kingston upon Thames is sort of okay, but it's going beyond the map. Hammersmith and Fulham is in a better place, but it still doesn't fit. And Kensington and Chelsea has disappeared. So doing something like that, changing the placement mode can sometimes help. But what we're going to do is we're going to use the label toolbar and this button to move a label. If you don't see the label toolbar, go to view toolbars and then turn the label to toolbar on. I will click this button to move a label 
and I'm going to manually move a few of these. And I'll start with Hillington. For me, it's a bit close to the boundary. So if I click, if I hover over it, you'll see an outline. And I'll left click once. And what happens usually, you see this thing about primary key. In this case, you can click OK. And then I'll left click once in Hillingdon and I'll just move it down a bit. There we go. I'll do the same in Barking and Dagenham. Just move it down a bit. Sometimes you try and move it and it sort of moves to somewhere else, but um, that's fine. What else? Southwark. Well, it's squeezed in a bit, so I'm going to move it up maybe to here so it's got more space. I'm not having much success. There we go. Lambeth, I might move that up and left a bit. Again, sometimes I'm moving these and they're not going first time where I want, but that's fine. I'm giving it more space. That's fine. Kingston upon Thames, let's click it and then move it to about here. Uh, there we go. Requires a little bit of trial and error. Um, down a bit, I think. There we go. Where else can we move? It's looking okay. Hackney, yeah. Let's move Hackney over a bit. Left click once, move it over here. There we go. And Islington, I'll shuffle that a little bit over. Maybe there, maybe down a tiny bit. Okay, so that's better, but we still have a problem with Hammersmith and Fulham, Kensington and Chelsea, which has disappeared, and City of London. So that would require maybe a little bit of manual intervention and a bit of creativity. So for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on the London Boroughs layer to open the properties. And at the moment, what's happening is everywhere has been labelled just with the data that's in the column for label name, which is LAD21NM. But we're going to have to get a bit creative if we want to fit labels in for a couple of them. So I'll click on the little expression button and I'm going to build up an expression and you can see what it does. So don't be afraid of this. It's quite straightforward once you know how it works. I'm going to type in the word case. Then I'm going to type when. Doesn't matter if it's lower or upper case. And then it says here when case when LAD21NM equals. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the fields and values section click on the name column and I'll click on all unique. That's just going to list all the names of the boroughs that are in that column. And I'm going to double click on Hammersmith and Fulham and it enters it over here. You could just type that in within single quotes, but I like to do it this way. It's quicker and I don't need to type it out. So we're going to ask it to, in cases where the name is Hammersmith and Fulham, then use H and F. I'm going to copy this, paste it. I'm going to delete Hammersmith and Fulham. I'm going to go back over to my list of names. I'm going to double click on Kensington and Chelsea. And I'm going to say when the local authority name equals Kensington and Chelsea, then, then basically means then use K and C because the K and C between single quotes is what the label will be now. And for all other ones, I need to type else and then we just want it to use the regular column, uh, the regular name in that column and I type end. So what's happening here is I'm asking it in cases where the name of the area is Hammersmith and Fulham, then use H and F instead of that label. When it's Kensington and Chelsea, use K and C instead. And all other ones, just use the regular name. And I use the end to end the expression. If I don't have end in, there'll be an error. And it doesn't matter how many, how much white space you have or if it's capitals or not. It doesn't matter at all. So just click OK. And if I click apply here, we can see now we've got H and F and K and C. Now, this is the kind of thing where you need to decide. It depends who's looking at the map. If it's a map for a London audience, they're going to 
probably know what H and F stands for. Um, it's better than having labels that don't fit or no labels at all. You could use an abbreviation, perhaps. If I clicked on the expression button again, I might want to change it to ham and full. Oops. And then for Kensington and Chelsea, I might want to change it to Ken and Che. Chell. Okay. Click OK. Let's try that. So when I do that, it doesn't really um, fit. If I go back to formatting, I could tell it to wrap on the character and because I put an and symbol into those two. So if I click apply, it will wrap on that character, but it will remove the and, which is not what we want. So just be aware of that. Let's go back to where we were. I'll change it back to H and F and K and C. Okay, so click OK and apply. For City of London, it's just too small. We could just get it to say City, so let's try that. The, uh, the City of London area is too small for the label and it's not going to change. So I'll just copy this and paste it and I'm just going to change it. So. I'll type it in this time instead of going to fields and values. City of London. And we're just going to label that with city. So what's happening here is when the label name is actually city of London, then we're going to just call it city in the label. Click OK and apply. All right. That's OK. I'm going to click OK again. I'll go to the move label tool. I'll move King, uh, Kensington and Chelsea a little bit. Oops, it's gone. Not great. Okay, sometimes stuff will happen. I'm going to hit escape for a second. So sometimes that'll happen. It's quite useful. I've zoomed in though, and it's come back. So if that happens, you can zoom in or out sometimes and it'll reappear. Let me just put it down here. And Hammersmith and Fulham I'll put over here. Let's see. I'll zoom to the full layer. I just need to move Hammersmith and Fulham over a bit to here and Kensington and Chelsea over here. Tower Hamlets, I'm going to left click and move up a bit there. And that's generally looking okay. For Richmond upon Thames, because it's got a river underneath it, we might want to make a little edit. So what I'll do there is I'll double click to go to layer properties and let's try a little buffer. I'll draw a text buffer. Size one's a bit big, as you can see. So I'll just reduce the size of that, maybe to six. And I'll maybe reduce the opacity to about 80. So that's a little bit better for somewhere like Richmond upon Thames. It's got something behind it. It just provides a little bit of uh, buffering. I'll maybe make it 0.7. Okay, and then I'll go to text. Let's try. I'm using Open Sans here. You may not have it on your computer, but you can try it. Let's try semi bold. Okay, that's a bit better. Maybe go down to size eight. Okay, that's okay. Um, and I'm going to click OK. So I've gone from something that was pretty bad in terms of labels to something. It is a little bit of a compromise. But if you think about your audience, will they know what H and F and K and C stand for? Um, it's better than having labels that don't fit or no labels at all. So sometimes you just need to think about these things and get a bit creative. If you want things to fit, you could rotate it round and that would be quite ugly. Um, but there's never a perfect solution for some of these things. You've seen that I've also used the move a label diagram or call out. That's uh, certainly very useful. Once you've moved those, you've got that auxiliary storage pop-up thing. Just so you know, if I go back to the layer properties and I go to placement, when you did that, when you click the first one to move it manually, it does this auxiliary storage thing. It's storing new coordinates for the labels here. So if you went to deactivate for the X and then deactivate again for the Y, it will reset it all and they'll go back to where they were. Okay, so I'll click OK on that. And there 
we have a map that's much better in terms of label placement. It can just be a massive headache and these are some of the little tips and tricks that I'd recommend you try if you want to make your map look a little bit nicer.